again, everybody, and welcome to a lesson on section 4.6, which focuses on similarity and transformations. Previous to this, we've talked about congruent figures and uh, dilations and transformations, and your transformations are your reflections, your rotations, and the translations. So we're going to combine the dilations and transformations today. So a similarity transformation is a dilation or a composition of rigid motions and dilations. So composition, we're going to have more than one thing going on here. In a similarity transformation, your figure preserves the shape but not its size. The side lengths will then change. And then we're going to be talking about similar figures, which are geometric figures that have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So let's do an example. I already drew out the triangle that it's talking about for us, uh, but the example says to graph triangle ABC with vertices of A is 9, negative 6, B is 0, negative 3, and C is 6, 9, and its image after the similarity transformation. So first we want to do this reflection on the y-axis, and then second we want to do the dilation where we take one-third the value of the given x and one-third the value of the given y. If you recall, the rule for reflecting over the y-axis is just take the opposite sign of your x value and keep the y value exactly as it is. So if I apply this rule to my a, b, and c coordinates, I get a prime, take the opposite sign of 9, so we get a negative 9, and we keep our negative 6. b prime, take the opposite sign of 0, well 0 is 0, Oops, sorry I'm off the screen here, so we get 0, and then we keep the negative 3. c prime, take the opposite sign of positive 6, so that becomes negative 6, and we keep our 9. So if we were to plot these points, we would get the following triangle. We'd have this triangle, which I'm going to draw as a dashed line because that's the intermediate, that's in between uh, our original image and our final image. But this would be the image reflected over the y-axis. And now we need to apply this rule where we take these now a prime, b prime, c prime points and we take one-third the value of the x and one-third the value of the y. So if we now look at a double prime, because we're applying a second rule here, we're going to take one-third of negative 9 and then one-third of negative 6. And that gives us a value of negative 3, negative 2 for a double prime. Applying the same rules to 0 and negative 3, one-third of 0 is 0, one-third of negative 3 is negative 1. And then for C, one-third of negative 6 is negative 2, one-third of 9 is 3. So let's plot A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. So the red figure here is our final image. If we take a look at another example, this one asks us to describe a similarity transformation that maps trapezoid WXYZ to trapezoid PQRS. So if we take a look, WXYZ is this blue, smaller trapezoid, and PQRS is the green one. So we're going from blue to green, so we are definitely enlarging our figure. So we have to figure out a scale factor here. In order to do that, I want to take uh, my image, a side length of my image, so if I look at SP and divide it by, SP is going to be related to ZW because we want to take our image to our pre-image, the ratio of the image to the pre-image. And the side length or line segment SP is 4 units long and ZW is 2 units long. So we can figure out that our scale factor is 2. We can see if we look at RQ and compare it to XY, these lines are both uh, slanted, they both have a slope. XY has a positive slope and 
uh, QR has a negative slope, so that means we have a reflection. And if you take a look at the base XW, that is the smaller of the two bases of this trapezoid. And the smaller of the two bases of the trapezoid, if you look at the green one, is down on the bottom here. So that means we have a reflection over this x-axis here. So let's go ahead and state that we have a reflection over the x-axis. And we already calculated that we had a dilation. So after the reflection of the x-axis, we have that followed by a dilation of, by a dilation with scale factor, not of, with a scale factor of two. The last part of this section is proving similar figures. Two figures are similar if a similarity transformation maps one figure onto another. So if we take a look at the example that we have here, we want to prove that square ABCD is similar to square EFGH. So prove the smaller square is similar to the bigger square through transformations that map ABCD onto EFGH. So the first thing that we need to do in order to start mapping ABCD onto this larger square is we need to translate it to the right. And if we look at the given information, it says square ABCD with side length S, square EFGH with side length 2S, and AD is parallel to EH. So AD and EH are parallel as marked in the pictures. We want to prove ABCD is similar to square EFGH. So let's go ahead and write down that we have to translate line segment AD to the right. So point A maps to point E and line segment AD lies on line segment EH since they are parallel. So we will have then, once we translate that over, we will have this figure inside and we will have point B, C, D, or B prime, C prime, D prime, and E, point E, we will keep and we'll get rid of that A. So then we can see here, if we take a look, uh, we want to take, to figure out the scale factor, we want to take the side length of our image, the ratio of the side length to our of our image to that of our pre-image. And this is side length S, this is side length 2S. So the scale factor, if we look at the ratio of line segment GH to line segment C prime, D prime, or even CD, you could write either one, we will have 2S divided by S the S's will cancel and we're left with a scale factor of 2. We will then write using E as the center dilation, dilate square E B prime C prime D prime by a scale factor of 2. Once you apply that scale factor of 2, 2 is greater than 1, so it means that we're enlarging the image, then E, B prime, C prime, D prime will extend out and map itself onto E, F, G, H. So that concludes this section and actually all of chapter 4, which is on transformations. In this lesson, you uh, learned about uh, similarity transformations and similar figures and how we could go about mapping one figure onto another using transformations and the scale factor. Thanks for listening and I will see you in chapter 5.